this doesn't look like what you think a river is, but you've got a variety of waterscapes across this site now. The National Trust has just completed work on the UK's first large-scale Stage Zero river restoration project. The aim is to reconnect the River Aller with its floodplain, creating a more natural and diverse river ecosystem, with slower water flow reducing the risk of flooding. We've obviously engineered this river restoration. It's something that we've proactively done. We used earth moving equipment to fill the river in, quite a long section of it. We then placed a lot of timber on the site. You can see all around us, about 700, 800 tonnes of timber on the site. They provide a bit of complexity for that water moving across the site, but it's also about habitat. Over 40% of UK wildlife is dependent in some way on deadwood habitat. So it's, you know, it's important that we've got some of that available. And then we planted quite a lot of trees, wildflower seed and wetland species as well. And all of that is just to give that wetlands system a bit of an ecological kickstart. Most types of river restoration historically have just changed the channel form. So you, you've bank lowered in places or re-meandered in places. What this restoration looks to do is completely do away with that channel. It's thinking outside of the channel. So it's not a river as we would think. The river is all around us. It's moving through the soil. It's in these ponds. It's in these streams that are moving through the landscape. It's much more complex and much more dynamic than it was before. The benefits of this type of river restoration are that you haven't just got a river channel anymore, you've got much more extent of habitat. It's incredible now, you know, it's only a few weeks post restoration and um, I'm really personally pleased with it. As you can see, there's lots of water about, there's lots of new vegetation, there's lots sprouting up, there's dragonflies, there's lots of aquatic invertebrates, you can hear birds. It's, um, it's a very different site than it was just a few months ago. There's lots of opportunities here for wildlife but there's multiple ecosystem benefits. Damper soils tend to hold more carbon. We're also helping to um, mitigate the impact of extreme weather. We're holding more water on the site during these drier periods. You know, it's, it's almost drought conditions now, and this site is still saturated with water. It's a sponge, you know, we've raised those groundwater levels. Hopefully during times of more extreme rainfall, that water's gonna be slowing more slowly through this site as well. So we're protecting downstream communities from flooding. The site will be carefully monitored, and if the restoration is successful, the project hopes to introduce beavers into the ecosystem. So what you're looking at here is a, is a beaver engineered wetland, and this is obviously quite a big beaver dam. You can see the height differential between the old stream bed and where the water is now. And what the beaver are doing here is holding that water in the landscape so they can move through it more easily, access food, escape predation. And this is what can happen if we give rivers space and time and give wildlife space and time as well as we'll have healthier, richer, more abundant and diverse river systems that also provide services for us. Stage zero restoration was first pioneered in Oregon in the United States. But many question if it has a place in the UK where land resources are already stretched by competing needs. We've got to decide what we want from our rivers and that's probably part of a wider you know, debate about what, what we want from our countryside. In terms of land management, you're always compromising, right? So if you do this river restoration here, then you, you can't, you know, you can't sow a crop or, you know, in, have intensive grazing. So I think we need to look at the way we produce our food. Um, I think we can do it in a much more sustainable way. So would you want to do this everywhere? You know, probably not. Do I think that this can be done in the UK in the right place? I think so, because, you know, the climate's not getting any any better and, and, and we're losing our wildlife at a rate of knots and we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We need to think about sequestering more carbon, you know, developing resilient river systems and, um, and giving nature a bit of a chance. <laughs>